Tubeless tyres are the best thing in the world when they work and they seal, but an absolute nightmare when they don't. They can be a total faff to set up. Sometimes they seal and inflate no problem. Sometimes they don't. I've wrestled with many a tubeless tyre in my time, and so have many of you. So to spare you any pain in the future or tubeless issues, I've decided to put together a handy tubeless troubleshooting guide so that we can help. Let's get to it. We're going to split this video into two sections, troubleshooting tubeless tyres when you're setting them up for the first time and troubleshooting when you're mid-ride at the side of the road and you've got a problem. We'll put timestamps in the video down below so that you can quickly navigate to the place where you need to be that's relevant for you. Starting with troubleshooting when you're setting up, before you even put a tire on, what you should do is check the rim and assess the status of the rim tape. Now, what you're looking for is any holes in it, particularly around the spoke holes as it can often break through those and also check that it's not lifting up anywhere on any of the edges. This is absolutely crucial for creating an airtight seal. If you're setting a wheel up tubeless for the first time, you may need to apply the tape yourself. Uh, some wheels don't require tape and they're just molded tubeless in the, the actual rim profile already. Most do require tape though. If you're applying a tubeless setup to a wheel that's previously been used tubeless, such as mine, it's a good idea to clean off the old sealant. To do that, there are various products out there. This is a specialist sealant remover from Silka, which I'm just gonna spray on and just wipe off the remaining sealant. Next, you want to install your tubeless valve or check your valve if you've already got one installed. The valve is, in my experience, the most common cause of air leaks in a tubeless setup. So really pay close attention. When you install it, you want to make sure that it's properly seated in the, the notch in the rim bed, and then you apply the nut and tighten that up with an O-ring seal on it as well, as that helps keep it airtight. What you also want to do is remove the valve core and just have a look through the valve hole because what can happen, especially if this is a valve that's previously been used, it can have sealant in there which is blocking it up. And when we come to inflate the tire, having a nice clear channel through that valve is really important for getting good airflow. Now if you remove a valve uh, from a wheel or a valve core, the best tool to use is one of these little park tool gadgets. They're re they really do make the job easy. Something else that can get clogged up with sealant is the valve core itself. What you want to check is that it's just nice and loose and free moving like that. Um, if it's not, just use a different one. We're next gonna put the tire on and a lot of people struggle when getting tubeless tires on because they're often a bit tighter than regular clinchers because they need to have that tight fit to get an airtight seal. So the key to getting your tire on is to make sure that when you put the bead around the tire, you get the tire bead all in this central channel on the rim. With one side of the tire on the rim the entire way around, just work your way around and make sure that that bead is all the way in that central sunken channel the whole way around. That'll make it much easier to get the other bead on the tire. Now simply work your way around pushing the other side in to the wheel all the way around. Again, try and push the other side of the tire also all the way into that sunken channel. Now, a lot of people get tempted to try and use tire levers when trying to force the tire onto the rim. Now you can do, and you do have less likelihood of causing damage because you're not gonna puncture an inner tube with a tire lever because there isn't an inner tube, you're setting it up tubeless. What you have to be careful not to damage though is the rim tape. People often do gouge or cut the rim tape when trying to force a tubeless tire on with tire levers and then that will stop you having that airtight seal. When it comes to injecting sealant, there's two options. You can either inject sealant through the valve with the core removed, or you can leave the bottom part of the tire not 
fully on the wheel yet and just pour some sealant in. This is a method that's more commonly used on mountain biking because the tires are so much bigger, it's a bit easier to do. Other sealants uh, suggest that that's what you do, such as the Silka sealant. Because it's so good at sealing, they think there's a good chance that you could block the valve hole uh, if you were to inject it through the valve. So I'm gonna pour some into the bottom of the tire here and then carefully put the rest of the tire on the rim so the sealant's now contained and inside it. With the tyre now on the rim and the sealant in there, we now need to inflate it and make sure that it's properly seated onto the hook of the wheel. Now, to do this, you need to have a decent pump. Um, little hand pumps like this are great for when you're out on your ride and fixing punctures, but you can't get the airflow required to blast it onto the, the rim uh, with one of these. A decent track pump, you can often do it, but some people still don't manage it with certain tire and rim combinations with a decent track pump, and they require some kind of compression device or charge cylinder, which you can then fill with air and then release a lot of high pressure air very quickly, then just blow the tire onto the rim. As it happens, you should hear a sort of snapping, cracking sound. That's what you wanna hear, and that is as the tire is snapping onto the rim hook. That's what we want. Right, let's inflate. This particular track pump is, is really good um, and as a result I can get adequate airflow in without having to use a charge cylinder or a compression uh, device in order to get the airflow in and to seat the tyre as you heard it crack there. Another top tip, which I said earlier, but I'll say it again, to help get greater airflow in to seat your tire, is to seat it first with the valve core removed, like I've done there. Once you inflate it, you'll hear it snap, it's seated. Once you take your pump off, it will deflate, as mine has just done, you can see there, but the tire bead remains seated on there, which is the key step. What we do now is simply just put the valve core back in and reinflate to whatever you want and the tire's seated. That's the hard part. Cool thing about this particular pump, I didn't use this feature because not everyone has a pump like this, but this special head can actually take the valve core out for you, put in all the air with that better airflow, and then put the valve core back in, in a single step. Very clever little gadget for him to peek. But what if the tyre bead doesn't slide up out of that channel and then snap onto the rim? This is a common issue that people can have. So there's a number of things that could be happening. One of the things could be a tolerance issue. This is a lot less common now with the latest tyres and wheels because of ERTO standards that have been introduced that the tyres and wheels now have to conform to. But it can still be an issue with wheels that don't conform to that standard. One of the problems can be the actual height of the hook on the wheel rim. Uh, if the gap between the top of the hook and the bottom of the hook is too great, it can mean that the gap for where the bead goes into is too great. You can reduce that gap and make it more airtight by adding another layer of rim tape. Sometimes I've actually known people to use Gorilla Tape um, instead of a rim tape, which is really strong in there, but using a second layer of dedicated rim tape would be the first thing I would suggest. The other problem can be with too much friction, with getting the bead to slide across the rim tape onto the hook. You can reduce that friction by simply using some soapy water. So if you just get a spray bottle um, with some dish soap water in there and simply spray it on the rim, and around it just to help lubricate it a bit, to help it slide on better, that can often help. The next thing is your tire has snapped onto the rim and it, it appears to have seated, but it's just not holding air. It just keeps going down all the time. As I said before, first thing to check, the valve. A good way to check things is to simply just get a bottle of soapy water again and spray it around the wheel and just check to see if there's any air gaps. Soapy water will form bubbles readily if there's air passing through it. So you will see where the air is escaping. Another thing to check at this stage is just the state of the rim and just see if there is any damage to it. This is more prevalent in alloy wheels because, well, if a carbon rim is damaged, it's probably completely knackered but you can sometimes have a dent in the side of your wheel rim and that could be causing an air gap where air can escape. 
If air is escaping from the valve, it's often just a case of just tightening it up. It just might not be quite tight enough and you can easily remedy that like so. One of the things I'd recommend you do is with the tire on, get the bike in the wheel and just spin it. This is useful for a, a couple of reasons. Firstly, it helps circulate the sealant around the entire tire and rim, which helps just seal it against the edge of the bead. Um, the centrifugal force just forces it out everywhere. And the other thing that it allows you to do is to just have a look at how the tire is seated. Because if you're still leaking and not holding air at this point, it might be because the tire is not fully properly seated the whole way around. And you'll be able to tell this by just looking at the tire in relation to say the fork blades or fork crown. And if you've got a bump in the tire where it's not properly seated, you'll see it just bobbing up and down like that. A tubeless setup that's been done properly should be more than capable of holding air overnight. Some do leak slightly and you might need to pump them up just a little bit before every ride, but yeah, they shouldn't deflate overnight. So beware of that. If you've got air leaking out of your spoke nipples, it can be an indication that the air is leaking through the rim tape. Although that shouldn't be happening to you because you checked your rim tape before you put the tire on and you didn't damage it with a tire lever when you put your tire on. Something to be aware of though, is that if you've done up your valve and air still seems to be escaping from the valve, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the air escaping from the valve itself. It could be escaping from another part of the wheel um, and a problem with the tape somewhere else within the whole wheel circumference. It just so happens that the air is coming out where the valve is because that's the easiest place for air to escape from. The air could be traveling from say this point all the way through to where the valve is and popping out there. The same applies for your spoke nipples if air is coming out of those. A word of caution though, don't over inflate your tires and also, don't just overinflate them as you, you're trying to seat the tire as well if they're not holding air and you're struggling. Be, pay attention to what the pressure gauge on your pump is saying. This is because if you apply too much pressure, what you can do is actually cause the tape to lift or you can pierce and cause a hole where the spoke holes are because the pressure has got too great. And then air will go into the rim cavity and you will start to inflate the rim cavity, which, can cause it to explode. Now, this is something that has happened to me before. Thankfully, not all wheels will do this because some of them have a safety feature built in. You can see it on this one here. Um, there's a little hole next to where the valve is and that will actually allow air to escape to stop you inflating the rim cavity, but just be aware of it. Also, can we just take a moment to just appreciate how cool these yellow P0 logos, it's like a Formula One car, I like those. So the next part of this troubleshooting guide, troubleshooting while you're out on your ride. So picture the scene, you're riding along, you get a puncture and all of a sudden milky sealant starts spewing out of your tire like Bishop the Cyborg being ravaged by the Queen Alien. First thing to do is sometimes just to stop if it's not sealing straight away and then just, well, pick up your bike and spin your wheel like we did when we were setting it up. And that way you're just getting the wheel to act as a centrifuge and you're trying to get that sealant to circle around and hopefully it will stop the hole. If not, inspect the hole um, because at this point the tubeless sealant isn't working. It's being overpowered by the size of the hole. You can inspect it to see if a plug might fix the issue. Plugs like these can be used to repair tubeless tires. Use an insertion device such as this Tubi Master um, to force the plug inside the hole in the tire and then you pull it out and the plug stays in there. Now these work much better with off-road applications and mountain bike tires because the pressures are lower. What you tend to find is that on road bike tires because the pressures are higher that the plugs often just get blown out as soon as you inflate the tire to a pressure that's actually something you want to ride. Um, you can use more specialist plugs as well such as Dyna plugs which are a bit more effective because they're able to sort of anchor inside the tire but Often what you find is by the time a tubeless system is failing, it can often just be much better to just set it up with a tube. 
You should always inspect the damage that's occurred to the tyre before deciding on the course of action to repair it at the side of the road. Now, if you've got a sidewall slash in your tyre, it's always going to be very difficult for sealant to repair that. That's because the centrifugal force of the wheel rotating forces the sealant to the tread, not so much to the sidewall. So sidewall is always going to be difficult. The other thing that can happen is damage to the actual tyre itself, such as when you get separation of the carcass from the bead. This can happen when your tyre encounters a really big impact, such as if you hit a massive pothole at speed, or if you were to hit, say, a kerb. That can actually cause a separation there and an air gap that can be quite hard to spot sometimes, that's right on the edge of the rim. Now in that instance, again, sealant is really going to struggle to seal that. I've been on many group rides where someone has been riding tubeless, they've had a puncture, it's not sealed, and then they've tried to get the tubeless system to work or they've tried to repair the tubeless system at the roadside and it still doesn't work. It's important to recognise that when the tubeless system uh, punctures and it starts to lose air, it's been overwhelmed. The system has failed at that point. And so to try and repair a tubeless system, it's something of a sunk cost fallacy. You're investing time in something that might repair it while all your friends at the side of the road are just sat there twiddling their thumbs and getting frustrated. When in actual fact, my recommendation is 95% of the time, it's better to just take a course of action which will repair it, which is to simply replace your tubeless setup with an inner tube to get you home. At this point, cut your losses, take half of the tyre bead off so that you can insert an inner tube, inflate it, bang, off you go. To reiterate, don't waste time doing something that might fix it, just do something that will fix it. Before you put an inner tube in though, there is a couple of quick things that you need to do so that you don't end up with another puncture. The first thing is when you've assessed the hole that's in your tyre that's caused the puncture, make sure it's not too big because if it's a big one, your inner tube will hemorrhage out of it and so you need to use some kind of tyre boot. If you don't have a tyre boot, use an old piece of tyre. If you don't have an old piece of tyre, use a gel wrapper. If you don't have any gel wrappers to hand, use a folded crisp packet. If you don't have a crisp packet, use a folded banknote. You can use loads of things uh, to form some kind of tyre boot, but it's important you do. The other mistake that people make is that they don't realise how effective tubeless actually is. A lot of the time, you don't even realise you've got a puncture on tubeless because it just seals it really quickly. The time when you notice it is when it doesn't seal. But prior to that, it's probably worked a few times. And as a result, you can have sharp objects embedded inside your tyre. As soon as you put an inner tube in, bang! they go straight away. So what you should do is always check the inside of your tire. Just gently and carefully run your thumb or you can use the back of a tire lever on the inside of the tire just to check that there's no sharp objects in there that are going to pierce that inner tube once you fix it. One of the things that can be a bit annoying when you're fixing a tubeless tire setup at the side of the road and putting an inner tube in is you've probably got a load of sealant in there that is then going to get all over your fingers and it can be quite messy. So a good idea if you're running tubeless is to simply get um, a little pair of nitrile gloves or just latex gloves and put those inside your saddle pack. I mean, yeah, you'll thank me later. They don't weigh anything, they don't take up any space. Put them in and just keep your hands much cleaner. And don't worry, the tubeless sealant shouldn't damage your inner tube that you put in either, especially if it's a TPU one or a butyl one. And the last troubleshooting thing to be aware of is that if you're getting a puncture on your tubeless setup and sealant isn't coming out, well, that probably just tells you that your sealant has dried up or run out. Uh, it's most likely that it's dried up. So it's important to replenish your sealant periodically. Unfortunately, this is a how long is a piece of string question. We get it all the time. How often should I replace or replenish my sealant? It depends on so many different factors. But like I've shown in videos before, what you can do is simply put your wheel like that and then you can use um, a spoke or something else long and thin like a, a zip tie, remove the valve core and use that as a dipstick inside the valve to actually see if there is any liquid sealant collecting at the bottom of the wheel. And that will tell you if you've still got sealant in there 
and you're good to go. Right, hope you found this video useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and put your comments and suggestions down below on anything we've missed or other troubleshooting things to do with tubeless. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Love you, bye.